it's hypothetical, but uh, given election trends in Arkansas, it's entirely possible that uh, that the majority party will flip between now and the time you lead the General Assembly next full session. How does that complicate your job? Well, in my mind, it doesn't complicate it at all. Uh, I, I was not elected majority leader today. I was elected speaker designate for the 89th General Assembly, uh, and that's to represent and to work with everybody, both Republicans and Democrats. And if we have our independent or Green Party, we'll work with them as well. Uh, so I look forward to working with the entire House, uh, regardless of what their party affiliation may be. Uh, our rules say this vote is the vote uh, for which we make for those for, because we intend for this person uh, to be speaker. That's what our rules say, uh, and that's what we've always done. Uh, there's never been a change, uh, and I think we'll just continue to move forward because if we wait until November after the election to start figuring out what we need to do uh, to get the people's done in the 89th General Assembly, we're going to be grossly inefficient, and it's going to cost the state money. You know, it costs us about $30,000 a day to be here, and if we wait to start planning uh, after November, then that's just more money that we're going to cost the state, that's more days we're going to be here. I want to do what Speaker Moore has done, and that's lead an effective and an efficient General Assembly. Representative, you've already kind of spoken out against that. Do you get a sense that that could be a possibility if Republicans take control? Well, I am going to, again, work with them starting day one. Well, I shouldn't say start, starting day one. I've always worked with the, with the uh, uh, members of the Republican Party. Uh, I, I enumerated three pieces of legislation that had broad-based support, both Republican and Democrat. I've got great friends uh, on the other side of the aisle. Um, I don't know that we're as partisan as the people uh, in the media think. Uh, when we get inside these walls, uh, we want to do what's best for the people. And I respect their vote. I think my members will respect their vote, and we're just going to work hard to do what's best for the people of Arkansas. Do so you have, you have no concern they would try to replace you if... I'm sorry? You have no concern they would try to replace you if Republicans became the majority? I, I, I don't worry about possibilities. There are a number of possibilities. Uh, we could have uh, additional Democrats uh, as well. So the elections will take care of themselves. Uh, this body, this House, this walls, that's, this is not the place for an election. Elections happen out there. We'll let that take care of itself. I'm going to work inside these walls to build a... Uh, a consensus and to move forward uh, in the 89th General Assembly. Obviously, one of the uh, powers of the Speaker is his appointment of leadership post. Uh, in that power, do you plan to work in a bipartisan manner? Absolutely. Well? Absolutely. Uh, it only makes sense we work in a bipartisan This is not new. I, mean, I just went through three bills, and I'll repeat them. Uh, the scrap metal bill, 64 members of the House signed on. 20 of the 28 Republicans serving signed on. About 46 members, both Republican and Democrat, signed on to my uh, taxpayer bill. Uh, and of course, Speaker Moore asked me to lead the uh, passage of our sentencing reform bill. 71 members of the General Assembly signed on. Uh, I, I think that speaks volume for how we can come together and work together. So that's what I look forward to doing. Specifically when it comes to leadership. Was a success. Oh, absolutely. This, this session was a success. And I think it starts with this man right here. He did an outstanding job of keeping us together. Uh, Speaker Moore uh, had a unique job of serving uh, as Speaker at a time where our House was uh, as closely divided as it's been in maybe forever. Uh, but think of this. This fiscal session ended in 19 days. Uh, last year, it ended in 18 days. We had a significant more number of Democrats in here, and that's because of his leadership. So he did a great job, uh, and I hope that I can build upon the example he set. Do you have a personal position on reducing the state income tax in Arkansas? I know it's not, it's not wasn't your speech, but sure. Representative Rice made a pretty good point with Texas and Tennessee having no state income tax. Oklahoma, Missouri and Louisiana talking about reducing theirs. Sure. I, I want to take a holistic approach to looking at that. You can talk about them reducing their income tax, but you've got to ask what's their property tax, what other taxes. So to take one part out and highlight that's probably not the way we want to serve. We want to take a holistic approach at looking at the revenue as well as how we spend our money. We have been fiscally conservative in this state. If there are, what, 40 plus other states would love to be in our position right now. That's because our governor, in partnership with this legislature has a history of balancing our budget. I'm going to continue that uh, as Speaker. Some would say that if Republicans do take control of the House that they should nominate a Republican Speaker. Why would you think that would be the wrong move? Again, I didn't run to be Majority Leader. I ran to be Leader, uh, Speaker, Designate, and then Speaker in the 89th General Assembly. Uh, <coughs> Robert Moore set a good example. Uh, I don't feel that he was a Democratic Speaker or a Republican Speaker. He was our Speaker. Uh, and I don't intend to uh, do anything different in that regard than he's done. I intend to lead the entire House. Again, I don't, in my speech I said, you know, we need to foster uh, a, an environment where we function like a patchwork quilt. 
not like red blankets and blue blankets. Everybody needs to join this and do what's best for the people of Arkansas. And so I'm not going to worry about elections. I'm not going to worry about what they're going to do. I know my friends on the other side of the aisle. They respect this vote. I also know that they're conservative, just like most Arkansans are. They don't want to spend any additional money by delay because of an extended session if we choose to change horses midstream or actually late in the game. Uh, so I'm looking for, to move forward and, and build on uh, the fine example that Speaker Moore has given us and have an efficient and effective session. Do you feel like the House being fairly evenly split, though, does that complicate your job? Well, sure. Um, but I, again, I think we should have strong debate and much discussion. That's when we get good policies. You know, again, I don't believe Republicans or Democrats have a monopoly on good ideas. We need to put all those good ideas on the table and do what's best for Arkansas. Do you have a specific issue that you kind of see as your agenda well, as Speaker? I know Speaker Moore had highways and transportation. Do you have an issue like that? Uh, I have a number, number of issues that I'm passionate about, uh, but I'm going to work with this uh, entire body uh, to formulate our policies as we move forward. Uh, I am not uh, the king of the House. I'm the Speaker of the House, and I'm going to work in partnership with my members, and we're going to fashion our direction. We're going to move forward as a team. Uh, unified, and we'll set the policies that make sense. We know there's some challenges. We know we've got to continue to fund education. We've got to make sure that our students have an opportunity for world-class education. Uh, we've got to make sure that we take care of our Medicaid problem. That's a serious problem. And we must continue to promote policies and work with this governor that will build Arkansas up by creating economic development and more jobs. We know those are things we're going to work on. Uh, beyond that, we'll see as we talk among ourselves and set our policy in our direction. So you don't have one specific thing that you're hoping to highlight? You listed a couple there. Well, I just listed three. Oh, yeah. I, I'm hoping to highlight that we continue to grow jobs. I'm hoping that we solve this Medicaid problem. And above all, we've got to continue to invest in our students by investing in education. There are three points there, Sarah. You want to keep, I mean, I don't know how many more you may give you. That's three good ones, I think, that if we can get that done, I think we've had a great session. How do you solve the Medicaid funding problem? Obviously, that's going to be a huge issue. Sure, that's a, that's a good question. And, uh, and our, uh, our Department of uh, Human Services, they're working, and our agencies are working. Uh, maybe maybe changing the way we, uh, uh, we provide fee, we pay for our services. Uh, I want to work in partnership with the governor and his administration uh, to solve that problem. I don't know the answer yet, but we're getting there and we're working on it. We've got teams of people working on that, and so I look forward to working with them to implement that. Do you think the cost savings of that would be enough to cover it, or will it have to be something else? Well, we'll see. Uh, you know, right now, uh, it's estimated that we still may have some uh, funding gap, but we're going to make sure that we take care uh, of the needs of the people of Arkansas. You don't have any legislation in mind that you're thinking about right now? With regard to Medicaid? Uh, and any of those issues? Um, no, I don't have anything specific in mind. We've got some things that we need to uh, continue to do. We've made great strides in education. Uh, we've got to continue to do that. I'm proud of where Arkansas is uh, now ranked nationally in education. We've got to keep that, uh, keep that going. Uh, the Governor's Quick Action Closing Fund has been tremendously successful. We want to make sure that he continues to uh, have those resources to bring jobs. My district, District 36, has been the benefit of uh, that quick action closing fund, uh, Wellspun, Salt Falcon Jet, uh, Century Industries, all those companies worked in partnership with the government uh, to grow jobs. And so we want to continue to do that. 